Well, surely the other solution and the, the easier solution would be, instead of to hand all of this land over, you know, 8% of the state's land mass, which, as I said before, includes farming land, pastoral land, you take the land that these communities sit on and simply hand them over to the people who live there. Because the, the crux of the issue, supposedly, is that the land that these people are living on is owned by the state government, so the people who live there are essentially tenants of the state government. So they want them to have some ownership of the land. Well, give them ownership of the houses that they're living in, give them ownership of the land that they're directly living on and leave the rest as it is. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, you're right on the money there. The issue about the pastoral leases, that is a worry because these are actual pastoral leases and they should not be put into a situation where they cannot be transacted. Now, that, that is really bad news, but it's only a small proportion of the pastoral leases that are there. But one of the big issues here is, and I, I'm led to believe that no matter what happens in this trust, it still doesn't give these communities, communities or anyone in them any free title over their land. And you're not going to care for anything or treat it in the same way uh, you might as if it was yours. So, once again, look, it's just damn tokenism. And, and when I see the parlous condition, what's going on up in the Kimberley in particular, you know, the drinking, um, the, 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 uh, the mayhem, uh, there's a lot of fires being lit up north uh, out of the attitude and the friction between Indigenous communities and the white communities. You know, there's a lot more that a government with a true conviction and a bit of courage could do. And, you know, the, the, the cashless debit card, uh, you know, it's, it's absurd that you give people that, that are basically addicted to alcohol the capacity to buy more and more of it. And, and most of all, we know about the kids mm. that have been born with alcohol fetal syndrome, but what about the mothers that are pregnant right now and are drinking? For God's sake, let's do something about this and not just tokenism. The, uh, the wash-up after all of that business with the, the heritage laws, of course, the government scrapped them in the end. It feels like they've been hurting a little bit since then and this is sort of their attempt to try and get over the defeat that you achieved. Well, they deserve to hurt. What they did was, was reprehensible. They deserve to hurt. And I, look, I think the impact it had on the way the referendum unfolded was absolutely huge. People got a glimpse as to what the future might look like. But, look, I'd ask the question here. The people of Australia spoke on The Voice. And to, to brand them as rednecks and ignorant, noisy people, that, that, was, that was a grubby thing to do. This, this was considered opinion of the majority of the people of Australia. The two leaders in this debate, Warren Mundine and especially Jacinta Price, they had some fabulous solutions and, and, and a, a way forward. And where are they? Are they being heard? You know, the media, uh, the press, ABC mm. in particular, they just will not con concede the fact that they got it completely wrong and there are people out there that have a solution and bring them into the room and start talking to them about what might be done. And unfortunately, look, you nailed it. Now, this is a halfway measure that, that in the end, history will judge very, very poorly. Well, you know, they could get all these people in a the room. They could even call it a voice to parliament if they really wanted to. They could legislate <laughs> one tomorrow, just as they could have legislated one a year ago. But anyway, I won't hold my breath. Tony Seabrook, thank you so much for your time.